Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much for being here. Let's raise our Bibles up to the sky and ask the Lord to bless his spoken word. Dear Lord God, we want to worship you in truth and spirit, and you are the Lord our God. Lord God, I pray that you come in and fix stuff, Lord God, and cleanse hearts, Lord God, and, and let people be loosed of addictions and bondages, Lord God, that healing will fall on this place, Lord God, as we invite you in to do a supernatural work. We give you glory. Lord, it's in your name, dear Jesus, that all of God's children from Westport to San Antonio to O'Fallon and all across the country said amen, amen and amen. Applaud the Lord. And as you're seated, look at your neighbor and say you're in at your mama's church. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for being here. And you guys are such a wonderful, wonderful audience, uh, or church rather, not audience. We thank you for being here uh, on live stream. We thank you for being here uh, right here at Westport. And uh, West, um, Ev Bible has been so blessed to, um, to be able to, to witness and, and minister to so many people, um, all you guys and all the people who are at our O'Fallon and San Antonio location. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a true, um, true wonderful experience expanding God's kingdom. Uh, and we couldn't do it without each and every one of you guys. So I thank you guys and uh, ask that you give your neighbor and yourself a round of applause for, <clears throat> for what God has done here at Have Bible World Travel. We thank you. Uh, our focus verse for the month is John 3.30. Uh, we are in the heart of worship. If you would turn with me into John 3 and 30, um, and if you are at home or you happen to be uh, at a nursing home or happen to be at a hospital, wherever you're watching, we, we want to be with you. We want to pray with you. We want you to worship with us. Uh, and, and don't let time and space uh, be an issue. We, you, you get right in here uh, and allow the Holy Spirit uh, to stir you. Uh, uh, surely you know that, that the Lord loves you and he's speaking to you today. It says, he must increase, <clears throat> but I must decrease. And I want you guys to say that with me. Uh, one, two, three, said, he must increase. But I must decrease. I want to say it one more time. One, two, three, go. He must increase, but I must decrease. So in this text, I'll, I'll, um, I'll bring this to you. This heart of worship message the Lord spoke to me months ago about that we're going to be doing this heart of worship month. And it's just actually getting back to the heart of worship, which, which is Jesus. Can you say his name? Say Jesus. Because as long as I keep Jesus, and I'm with you guys. There's some times when you're in this thing called life and you, and you, just, you, you just really kind of need to throw out an anchor. You know, I, I'm speaking for myself. That's, that's, I'm just, all I'm just saying is for me. I'm being honest and upfront with you. I, I got to, you know, sometimes it's spinning. I mean, sometimes life is really rocking and rolling and, and it's spinning. And sometimes if, if, if it starts to spin out of control, you can, you can just throw out an anchor. And I want you to know the anchor still holds. The anchor's Jesus. And that's the heart of worship, and that's the heart of this message today. Does anybody, does anybody understand what I'm talking about? Look at your neighbor and say, the anchor still holds. It's, it still holds in, in the midst of a storm. In the midst of all the stuff, and everybody's got some. Everybody's got some. I, I ain't never met anybody yet that didn't, didn't have any, any stuff. And I'm with you. I'm right there with you today. I'm preaching to myself. And I, I like to just throw out the anchor. You know, every once in a while, it's, it's almost like letting, you know, go wake Jesus up and, and, and get him up on the deck and just say, peace, be still. Amen. Amen. We need to bring him on the top deck today and just say, peace, be still. That's how I want, to get my, I want to get my worship together and I worship from an advantage point. Just peace be still. Lord Jesus, just, just, just calm the water. Just, just, just calm. I want to worship you. I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm tired of the same old, same old church. Just the same routine and everything. I want to meet Jesus in this place. That's, that's what the heart of worship. I just want to meet him. I, I don't want anybody to, 
to, to get in my stuff or anything. I don't need you to fix me. I just want to, I want to meet Jesus because I, I got stuff going on in my life that nobody, nobody's going to understand it but Jesus. You can tell a psychiatrist or a doctor all day long and he really doesn't understand because he didn't make it, but Jesus did Almighty. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Who am I talking to today? Yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes you just, you, you just want to talk to him. Well, today we're going to worship him. So in this, John 3 and 30, um, you look at this and you, you find out that John the baptizer is the front runner for Jesus. His job was to be put out front and, and be the herald that everybody, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, over and over and over kind of thing, okay? So if you're to read this, you find out that there, there actually was even kind of a competition there for a second. They had Jesus' disciples and John the Baptist's disciples and and sometimes there's a, uh, some, some competitive spirit in, in the church. Not this church, but other churches where people are almost competing and jockeying for position. You want me to come down here? Because I, I can do it. I'll jump right in your cooler. Don't act like you ain't competing a little bit. Amen. You, you're elbowing in. What, what do you mean you're coming in here? Amen. It ain't, it ain't like that with Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus ain't like that. John the Baptist says, he says, in order, in order for him to increase, I got, I got to back that thing up. Amen? I mean, if you want Jesus to increase in your life, you've got to back that thing up. Say, back that thing up. Back that thing up. You know, sometimes you just got to look in the mirror and go, you need to back up just a little bit. You can't come all puffed up and we'll be talking about that. Because the heart of worship is Jesus. I just get sometimes just kind of fed up with church philosophy and church ideology. And I just want to worship Jesus. Amen. That's what this is. This whole month is just going to be about worshiping Jesus. I may fall right now in front of everybody. I may fall right on my face and just start worshiping Jesus. And if I do, you'll have to pardon me for a second. Because sometimes that's where I feel like I need to be. Down. Amen. Jesus thinks everything of me. It's just sometimes I feel like I need to take on that position so we can get that going. Amen. And what that does is it, 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 it stops pride and it stops arrogance and, and, and smarty pants. You ever met a smarty pants? Sometimes you need to tell smarty pants to back that thing up a little bit. I get tired of smarty pants after a while. They ain't got nothing to do with the relationship with you. They think because somebody's smart that he, he got a better relationship. Oh, you don't want me to go there. Because he's smarter than you are, he's got a better relationship with you. Actually, he's probably got a worse relationship with you. He's, got, he's putting on a front. I'm way off my message right now. Watch this now. So uh, go to Psalms with me, 100. You guys are going to start dancing or something in here. Be like a Pentecostal people or something up in here. Glory. Psalm 100. <clears throat> and this is just, we're going to end up in John 4. So I always kind of pause here. And, and uh, Psalms 100 is one you can always pull out when you need to get things straightened back out. So Psalms 100, we'll go through it one time. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. So just scream right now as loud as you can. Do it right now. One, two, three, go. Don't do that again, man. Down there at Buck's house down in San Antonio, Texas, they, they say yee-haw. Amen. But they love Jesus just as much as you do. Did you get that? Oh, I don't know. Fallon, they're doing it too. And everybody does it a little different way. And the, and the goal today is to let you know just because I say yee-haw or you say whatever, hallelujah, or whatever, in another language, somebody else, they're still all worshiping Jesus. Because they're born again. And, and sometimes in, 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 in Christian life and church, you have, to, you have to get some space sometimes when you're when you're getting ready to worship Jesus. So just create a little spiritual and physical 
uh, space because the Holy Ghost might get on you and you might, you might just want to want to shout just a little, you know, so, so just kind of get ready. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. So we did that. And the singing thing, let me tell you what worship is. Worship defined as the feeling and ex- or, or, or expression of reverence and adoration for God. It's the feeling of expression of reverence and adoration for God. So I'm expressing how much I love the Lord basically is all I'm doing. It's not real difficult. Just kind of do it. You know, we talked about it at the men's conference. We drove down to Tennessee and came back, and, and I talked to Brother Gary, and he got to express his love for Jesus by handing out a bunch of Bibles and everything. He was worshiping the Lord, and you can do that however you see fit, but just make sure you get her done. Amen? Amen. Um, know that the Lord, He is God, and it is He who made us, and we are His, and we are His people, and the sheep of so he said, to me, it's, it kind of sounds like, Lonnie, that he owns everything. It, it looks so, so that's kind of cool. And if you're connected to him through the blood of Jesus Christ, that means you're an, that means you're an heir. <laughs> you guys, I'm going over your head today. If he's your daddy, you're an heir to all this stuff. All the stuff my dad has. Is mine. My daddy gave it all to me. And wouldn't it be a shame if God's trying to give you some stuff and you all didn't even want it? So this, you, 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 have to, you, have to, you have to just go, you know, I, I, I want some more of you, Jesus. And, and he wants to give all good things. And you know the scripture, and we can look that up and all that. God wants us to give us all good things, but you have to ask for it. You have to, oh, God, give me that, you know. I, I want to worship you. I want to worship you with, 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 with truth and, and holiness. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give, give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is what? Good. Now say good. good. Now say good. good. His steadfast love endures forever, his faithfulness to all generations. I got it, you know, God gave me a revelation. He says, you know what? He says, you know, when we're worshiping the Lord, you know, like we are, and, and sometimes we get a little wild, and, uh, and some of you guys, I could jerk your Baptist card for dancing a little bit, but uh, I, find it, I find it weird how the world will stand in line. I, I don't know if you guys ever went to concerts when you are teenagers, but I used to. I used to go to concerts, and, it, and everybody got tickets at, at, at back, backstage or back street or whatever it was. It was a record store. And then and, and in order so you could go and, 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 and praise that God or whatever, you used to get a line ticket to stand in line so you could... So you, you, you stood in line to get a line ticket so you could, when it was time for you to buy tickets, you could buy tickets to go to a concert so you could worship a heathen God. And we stand on chairs, throw chairs, and shoot all, you know, do all kinds of stuff and go to these concerts. And everybody, I mean, they're, they're, they're so excited about the God they serve, they slam dance somewhere. Well, they get, they, and you wonder what happened to the world. These people are passionate about their God. They're worshiping their God and they're passionate. They're all burning and they're going to burn and go to hell. But they're passionate about the God that they're serving. They're slam dancing and smashing and wearing makeup and got dragons and demons and all kinds of nasty stuff, but they're passionate about their God. And then you get the Christians get whoop, 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 whoop. Not you guys, but other churches. And you want to know what happened to the world? Because we don't really believe that God hears us and, and he really does have good things for us. I'm here to tell you today, we're going to bust that myth and God really wants you to worship him and get excited about God and be excited about being covered under the blood of the Lamb and be excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, I don't know. I guess I can go. We'll see you guys. <laughs> so, in, in Psalm 99.5, you guys thought I was serious there. Psalm 99.5 says, exalt. Let's read it together. Say it with me loud. Exalt. 
Uh, hold on for a second. That's really bad. Let's do that again. I mean, come on. On three, we're going to do it together. One, two, three, go. Exalt the Lord our God. Louder. Worship at his Okay, listen to this. Exalt means to hold in high, very high regard, to think or speak highly of. So we're going to exalt the Lord, uh, and we're supposed to worship at his what? What that means is I'm supposed to be at a place, a reverent in my spirit. It doesn't mean you beat down, it's pious to, you know, but you know that, that's not it. Be at his footstool, get rid of your pride, get rid of your arrogance. And I thought about, and I thought about this, I, what does this arrogance mean? What is this error? Turn me down just a little bit, please. What is this error uh, uh, what, that he's talking about? What he's trying to keep you from is this kind of attitude. Here it is. <laughs> well, God, if you ain't in on this thing, you're, you're missing something really good because I'm, I'm a big deal down here. Well, let me come over here. If I'm not in on that ministry, if I'm not in on that ministry, you, you, you're really missing out on something because I'm a, I'm a real big deal. That's what he's trying to keep you from doing. So he says, why don't you strip her down and get at the footstool and then exalt me? Does that make sense? Because that spoke to me. I was walking through the hall. I go, God, what does that mean? He goes, he goes you might want to just... Tone her down just a little bit. Just, just back it up just a little bit and get at my footstool first. That's where true worship begins. When I get at the feet of, of Jesus, and I, I love getting at the feet of the king. Can you, imagine, can you imagine grabbing the ankles of Jesus? The opportunity to grab the ankles of the man that made you? And just, and just put your, your hands in the man from Galilee, the, the, the nail-scarred hands. I want, I want to feel them. They're, they're strapping and strong. I love that about a, a strong man. I love, I love grabbing a handshake and shaking it. with. There's something to that. When you're, when you're grabbing a hold of the Messiah, you got, you got a hold of everything. you got a hold of life. He breathes life into his people. They just, That's what worship is. Him breathing life into you, and you're you're giving it. You're giving it back to him. This this horizontal worship with me preaching and the praise team, they're they're creating an environment of worship. This horizontal relationship with me and you and the Holy Spirit, and then we exalt the Lord by lifting it up in a vertical position. That's perfect worship. That's true worship. That's humble worship. Don't have it all right, Lonnie, but I have something. I don't have it all together, but when I get together with, I love being with you guys. I love worshiping with, with people and just kind of doing my own thing. And, that, and that's why I like, I like just worshiping the Lord and not worrying about what anybody says. I like being in the front row and just looking at the Lord and just worshiping. And, and it, creates, it creates a worship environment where demons and devils have to, they got to go. And, and, and if I create this experience in, in my bedroom at 5.30 in the morning by putting on my radio and then I'm singing to the Lord in the shower and I'm singing, I'm an exalt and then while I ride up here on my motorcycle, do you see there's no place for the enemy to be? He goes, I can't get anywhere this rank. He, he's praying, hold oh, on, listen, he's praying before he goes to bed. Then when he gets up, he's praying. Then he's turning on music and he's singing in the shower. Then when he gets on his bike, he's starting to listen to some more praise music. Then he comes up here with the deacons and prays with them. Then gets in here and gets his praise on with these guys. He ain't got no way he can beat me. I got a, I got a spiritual force field around me constantly. And instead, hey, listen to me. Instead, instead of God's people turning on a bunch of nonsense, grab your Bible and, and praise the Lord. And then at the end of the day, it starts getting at the end of the day and you just praise God again. You go, you know what, devil? I didn't have time for you. You know what, depression, drunkenness, addiction, and everything, I didn't have time for you either. I was too busy praising God all the time. You know, the bad relationship and the sickness and disease and everything. All I had time was for was to praise God all day. I didn't have time to gossip. I didn't have time to get off Facebook. I didn't have time to do any of that. I was praising God all day long. Amen. Oh, man. Praise God. 
I'm glad somebody showed up and wanted to praise God. That's just kind of cool, just being in, I don't know where you're at. Maybe everything's perfect in your life. Well, you don't need this service then. John chapter 4, where we're going. Amen. I'm guilty as charged. I'm a sinner. Guilty as charged. Covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 John, chapter 4. Uh, you guys down in Texas and Old Fallon, settle down a little bit. I'm going to end up getting some emails there. Dancing on the chairs down there. And John, chapter 4, as we talk about the heart of worship, um, it says, now when Jesus... Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing disciples more than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria, so he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar. Near that field that Jacob had given his son Joseph, Joseph, Jacob's well was there, so was Jesus. So I'm engaging you right now. I'm taking you back 2,000 years. Just pretend that you're around the well. That, you know, around the well, Terry, would have been right around like the water cooler. That's where everybody gathered. Around the well, there, that's where the community was. They're gathering there. Just picture yourself 2,000 years ago being in the midst of this conversation. Watch this. You're getting worship on. Uh, verse 6, Jacob's well was there, so, so Jesus, wearied as he was from this journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Now, you're watching this. You're watching this. Jesus set this woman up. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me? A woman of Samaria. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Verse 10, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. So you need to know that since God is no respecter of persons, he wants to give you living water. He wants to give you a drink. Because he wants you to worship him. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He has given us this well and drank from it himself as he did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to him, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Amen. Now hold on for just a second. So he's saying if you, if you take a drink, if you, if you come up, if you like to drink, <laughs> if you like to drink, boy, you're in for, you're in for a great message. This is, this, is the, this, is the, this is the message about worshiping and drinking. And, and this bartender doesn't serve up spirits, nasty spirits like whiskey and alcohol and beer. He serves up the Holy Ghost. And when you get a drink of the Holy Ghost, nothing else will do. Somebody. Whoever drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a what? Spring of water welling up to eternal life. And I thought about this welling up. This welling up is bubbling up. It's almost like boiling. It's like something stirring inside of your belly. It's a fire that's created inside by the stirring of the Holy Spirit. The apostle Paul told Timothy to make sure that you Make sure that you fan the flame. Amen. 
And what happens is when you give that, 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 that Holy Ghost flame, you give it oxygen or you give it stirring in worship, that Holy Spirit starts to just kind of stir it. You remember when the cabbage patch was popular? That's what's happening. You're just kind of, you're just kind of stirring the Spirit up. Did you see that? I brought that back. That's, that's, just, that's, just stir, that's just stirring that thing up. Amen? You can't even believe I'm doing that, can you? I can't either, but what the heck. So we're stirring up the spirit. I mean, we, I, I didn't have any problem doing that when I, was, when I was drinking alcohol. I didn't have any problem doing that and dancing on the bar, so surely I shouldn't have a problem dancing on the, on the, dancing on the pulpit for the Lord. <laughs> almost caught you, didn't I? It just almost feels good, doesn't it? Because what I'm doing is I'm actually taking the truths from God and I'm grabbing a hold of them. And I love taking a hold of God's truth and making it mine. Because it, it is so much better than, than addictions. It, it, you know, you, you, you get it and you don't have... You, you do get a Holy Ghost hangover the next morning. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still twitching a little from the night before from, from praising the Lord. But that's true worship. Um... The woman said to him, remember, we're still at the well 2,000 years ago. Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. We, we obviously know this story. This woman had a problem with adultery. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. Say this with me in verse 23. It says, but the hour is coming and is now here when... Hold on for just a second. Let's, let's stop. True worshipers, true worshipers in church, true worshipers on a mountain, true worshipers wherever you're at, true worshipers. That's all he's looking for. He's not looking for holy worship. Holy worship. We got, we got holy worship. Turn me down just a little bit. We got holy worship. We got holy worship. Oh, it's holy worship. God's not looking for holy worship because that's everybody trying to get the perfect note and the perfect music and the perfect time and the perfect lights and the perfect smoke and the perfect mirrors and the perfect everything. What he's looking for is holy worshipers. So holy worshipers is what he's looking for. People that have been set aside to praise God. We're always, as Christians, we're looking for this, this, experience, this grandiose experience, and this is great praise music, and it's great this, and it, and it is. But God is looking for the hearts of the worshipers. That's what makes the experience holy. Amen? And that's what he's looking for for me and for you, and he's looking for it today. He doesn't want you to wait till next week and go, I'm, next week, you know, I, I'm really coming out of the stalls, and I'm, I'm going to really get this. He wants you to get it today. He wants you to be a holy worshiper today. He says, now, when the true worshipers will worship the Father, say it with me, in, and in truth. Stop. Spirit and truth. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit, and the truth is God's Word. Worship the Father in spirit and truth. I'm going to ask the, uh, the deacons and the praise team to come forward a little bit early. We're going to get a couple of minutes, or if you will, ahead of the enemy. We're going to worship the Father in spirit and truth. Let's say it one more time. The Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is, what does he say? He is seeking. Right now, God is seeking. He is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must what? Worship in spirit and in truth. 
Sounds like a pretty easy plan. What does that mean? That means it can't be canned religion. That means when I preach, it can't be a canned uh, sermon. I, I can't get that off of the... I can't preach somebody else's message. I can't have a, 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 a canned sermon. I can't pull it off the internet and then you find out that he, somebody else preached it next week. Now, I know they copy off of me, but I ain't going to copy off somebody else. Amen. What I need to do is give my people fresh bread so they can eat. And I can't can the Holy Spirit. That's called religion. Stand with me if you would. In O'Fallon and in San Antonio, Texas. The last part that I'm getting ready to read will shake you to the core. But again, I have to take you back 2,000 years ago. And I'm going to ask uh, the, the praise team just to, just to play lightly in the background. Just... just because I, I totally believe that there's something very special and very unique about worshiping the Lord. It's, 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 it's almost awkward sometimes. Today we're going to take the awkward off of worship. Verse 25 says, The woman said to him, I know that you, I know that the Messiah is coming. He who's called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. She was, hold on for a second. She was in the very presence of Jesus you have to close your eyes to get this one give me a little more microphone she was right there at the well remember I told you I'm going to take you back 2,000 years somebody but you have to visualize it and you have to pray about it and right now you say oh what I'd give to have been at the well when this prostitute came in and Jesus spared her life. And they got that worship thing down. You have to worship Jesus in spirit and truth. You have to push away all things. You gotta, sometimes you got to strip it down just a little bit. And sometimes you got to start over. Sometimes you got to strip it down. You got you to get rid of some of the stuff. So it can just be you and Jesus. We're in a state of an emergency in the church worldwide where the true worshipers got to get under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Nothing else will do, my friends, with every fiber of my being. If you don't know Jesus, Christ as your Lord and Savior I beg you with everything I know how to do and ask you to receive Jesus not for my benefit I got the benefits already I've already been born again I don't get any brownie points if you come to the Lord but I'll tell you what I get Gary I get to worship with you oh what a day there's going to be a reunion just picture it the stage is already set. The mansions have been built. And the dance floor is made out of gold. The only thing that's missing is you. Right now you just say, you know what? I'm going to start my worship life with Jesus today. Just here's what I want to do. I'm going to do something special today. Because we're going to get back to the heart of worship. And it's Jesus. And you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start something up. And if that's you, raise your hand right now. Whether you're in Texas, O'Fallon, or right here in Westport, you just raise your hand and say, I'm going to start something today. I'm already born again, but I'm going to start something. I'm going to start a worship. 
I'm going to start a worship that's not going to quit until Jesus comes back and gets me. I'm going to get my practice on because I know when I, when I get into heaven, I'm going to be praising him forever and ever. I wanna, I'm going to get in a practice session. I want to get in training camp. And from now on, I'm going to worship God. And if it's summertime, I'm going to roll my windows down and I want somebody to hear that I love Jesus. And when I pull up to a stoplight, I'm not going to turn it down. I'm going to turn it up. Oh, church. He's coming right past you. If you got your hands raised, I just want you to come down to the altar right now. We're not going to embarrass you. Just come down and worship with us. We're not going to embarrass you. I see the hands. I see him in O'Fallon. I seen him in San Antonio, Texas with Buck and Dory. I see him with Greg and Anna out there in O'Fallon. I see everybody that has clicked in on live stream. There's a Holy Ghost revival, and you need to be part of it. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to raise your hand and just say, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. And if you need a healing, physical or spiritual, if you need to be born again, let one of these deacons know. Just grab them and say, I need to be saved. Grab them by their shirt and say, can you tell me about Jesus? Can you tell me how to get into heaven? Shake them and say, I want to know. I can't leave this building until I know Jesus. And if you're here to worship at the footstool, this is the footstool that Psalms 99.5 talks about. You're in his footstool. Oh, what a beautiful place it is. Lord Jesus, do your handiwork here today in West Fort in O'Fallon in San Antonio, Texas. Lord, your children are crying out to you today. They want to worship you in truth and spirit. Let it be done in Jesus' name. As God's people said, amen and amen. Now bring him applause and praise God today. Brother Mark, hallelujah.